the writer of Acts, shifts the focus of, the, of his book to Paul's ministry and the worldwide spread of the church. And, and how this church began to impact the entire region, both Jews and Gentiles. I believe that God still desires to reach the world. Amen? Amen. I believe that God still desires to reach new people and to affect an entire world. But in order for us to take that place and take that position to reach the world, we must be willing to be called out. Now remember 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17? Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not any unclean thing, and I will receive you. I want to point out something very important before I go any further this morning. Notice the action of the prophet and the actions of the people in our text. Notice what happened. They were praying and they were fasting. Before they got a word, before they got directions, before they got empowered, they were in prayer and they were fasting. And then, after they had prayed and after they had fasted, they got a word from God. Call out Paul. Call out Barnabas. Lay your hands on them. Set them more up and send them out. Can I tell you something? The priority of spiritual awakening began with prayer and fasting. I'm going to say that again. The priority of spiritual awakening began with prayer and fasting. Church, I know you understand the importance of fasting. We do it the first of the year. But I don't want you just to do it the first 21 days of the year. If you've not fasted lately, do it again. It ought to be part of your life. Intense prayer always precedes intense power. Yeah. I'm going to say that loud again. Intense prayer always precedes intense power. If we want this church to be active in the power of God, we must be active in powerful prayer. After the church prays, we'll get a word. After the church prays, we'll get direction. After the church prays, we'll get power. We must receive the power of God, but we must be willing to pray and fast. Amen? Amen. Listen, Acts chapter 1. Verse 14, the church is found seeking the face of God. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with men and women and the Mary, the mother of Jesus, and His brethren. They're praying in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. The church is empowered and 3,000 people are saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, they continued in themselves in prayer. And in Acts chapter 3, 5,000 people were, praying, were saved. In Acts chapter 4, you find them praying again. Acts chapter 4, they quit counting 3,000 and 5,000. They just said people were added to the church, what? Daily. All the more believers were added to the church. Why? Because they began to pray and proclaim. One chapter they prayed, the next chapter they proclaimed, and God failed. They prayed and then they proclaimed. Listen, that's still got to be the model of the church today. Pray and proclaim. Let us not be willing to sit back and not pray nor proclaim. I'm so worried that we've come up with an idea that church is. Let me come and sing a few songs. Let me get a message of encouragement. Let us go home and go back to our normal way of life. But the church must be active Sunday through Sunday. We must have people that will pray and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. As a matter of fact, we have the greatest message the world has ever heard. And we've got the most important message that they still need to hear. This message is not old and worn out. It is still yes and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. He was born of a virgin. He was raised a sinless life. He died on a cross and rose from the dead. And yes, He still has power to deliver you from your sins. He still has power to save you and deliver you. This is the type of the message the world needs to hear. Let us not be afraid to pray and proclaim that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid to be called out. Don't be afraid to be called out. The world needs your message. Now let's get back to our text. After the prophets have prayed and fasted, they got this word, separate Paul and, or Saul and Barnabas. They laid their hands on them and they set them forth for ministry. But notice what happened next. Paul and Barnabas were sent out by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Ghost gave them the direction. But then what did they do? They left. They went on a mission. In other words, once you are prayed and once you've got the anointing, you eventually have to activate it by going into the world. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God is calling some of you this morning. He wants to anoint you to spread the gospel. He wants to anoint you to be an effective witness. He wants to anoint you to go into all the world. He wants to anoint you to win the laws. But you've got to be willing to be called out. Now let me ask you two questions this morning. Number one. What is He calling you out of? What is He calling you out of? Some of you may feel like you're not worthy to be called. Some of you may feel like 
You're not worthy to have a voice for Jesus. Some of you feel like you're not worthy. Maybe you're still bound. Maybe you're still addicted to drugs. Maybe you're still bound by the spirit of doubt. Maybe you're still controlled by the lust of the flesh. Maybe you're living a double lifestyle. Maybe you're in a serious need of a Savior. Maybe you're just lost and undone. And you need Jesus Christ to save you of all of your, all of your sins. I've got the greatest news of ever. Jesus still saves. He saves. He stays. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus still saves and He's calling you out this morning. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises who has called you out of darkness and into His marvelous light. He is still calling you out of darkness this morning. I don't know what you're bound by. I don't know what you're in, but I know He's still calling you out of something. I know maybe you're not ready right now, but God is saying, come on, come on. I've got a place for you. Get out of that darkness. Get out of that sin. Get out of that lifestyle. Let me change you and deliver you. He's still calling you out of your junk. Amen. You don't have to live bound. You don't have to live uh, uh, tormented. You don't have to live in isolation. Everybody say isolation. isolation. You don't have to live in isolation. And the devil has some of you convinced that isolation is the only way you'll ever live. You'll never be loved by a group. You'll never be a part of a group. You'll never get used by a group. Listen, the devil is the father of all lies. Trust me, you cannot listen to the devil. He's telling some of you that you're useless and unlovable. Notice I did not say unloved. I said unlovable. Because see, unloved means nobody loves you, which would be a lie. Unlovable means you're not worthy of love. He's got some of you convinced that you're not worthy to be loved by anybody. He's convinced you that you've been too bad and you've done too many bad things and you've messed up too much and you've run from God too long. So surely nobody can love you. Surely God doesn't love you. You cursed Him. Surely God doesn't love you. You ran from Him. Surely God doesn't love you. You spat at Him. Surely God doesn't love you. Yes, God so loved the world that He gave His only Son for you. you confused and bound. I know life is not always perfect. I know the enemy is loose, but I know the victory belongs to the children of God. Listen, I know the Word sets me free. I know there's still power in the cross and power in the blood. And thank God, I'm coming out of this mess. I'm getting out of this situation. He is calling me out of this pit of despondency. He's calling me out of this, this pit of bondage, and I'm going to live free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you are sitting here thinking, Oh, this sermon's not for me. It's for somebody. No, 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 honey. It's for you. Yeah. God wants to get you out of your situation yeah. and set you forth to do a work for Him. Yes, amen. God doesn't love you just to have you sit around. He loves you because He doesn't want you to live in isolation. God doesn't want you to live in the back of the cage hiding all your life. You are lovable and you are desirable and you are needed. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been mistreated. But God is here and He's able to heal you this morning. God is here to set you free. You are being called out in the name of Jesus Christ. God knows your name and He's calling you out of darkness and calling you out of bondage and calling you out of sin and isolation. He's calling you out of discouragement and contempt and anger and bitterness. God is calling you today. Get your junk and let Him get you out of your stuff. God wants to anoint you to proclaim His power that the world can see Jesus Christ in you. Amen? Amen. Why is God calling you out? Second question. Listen to this question. Why is God calling you out? What's He calling you out for? Here's why. He's calling you to be a light to your community. Yes. Maybe He's calling you out to save your family and break that curse. Maybe He's calling you out to preach the gospel, to evangelize the world. Maybe He's calling you out just to be a helper and a supporter in the right. church. But what has He called you out of and what has He called you out for? Mm -hmm. You'll never be able to answer that question if you don't get out and come out. Mm -hmm. You have to answer the call to come out before you can answer the call to go out. Right. I'm going to say that again. You have to answer the call to come out before you can answer the call to go out. If you continue reading in chapter 13, by the way, I'm going to preach a simple little message out of chapter 14 tonight. Be back tonight at 6 o'clock. But in chapter 13, you'll see where Paul and Barnabas were stirred up all kind of stuff. Oh my goodness. The message made people hungry and interested in more stuff. It excited people to trust the Lord. Their message attracted, it said almost everybody in the city came to hear them preach. 
I mean, people came from everywhere. Why? Because they had been anointed and set out to preach a message about Jesus crucified and Jesus resurrected. Oh, Brother Chris, we need another message. Oh, Brother Chris, we need another idea. Oh, Brother Chris, we better have better lighting. We better have better sound. And we better have better music. And we need a, a, we need a, a contemporary praise band. And we need some guitar players. Yeah, I love guitars. Let them come. Lord, if you play the bass guitar, we need you. Electric, bring a steel top. I don't care. We, the more musicians, the better. I don't know what we'll put them, but we'll put them somewhere. We'll, listen, but let me tell you something. That's not the message the world needs to hear. The message is still the same. The same yeah, message amen. Saul preached and Barnabas yeah. preaches. The message we need to preach right now. Yeah. Jesus Christ died for your yeah. sins. Yeah. And you yeah. conquered death, hell, and the grave. And he's alive forevermore. Let us realize that is the message that brings people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Yeah. He can preach all the messages on prosperity you want, but people need a message of Jesus Christ, yeah. the only saving hope of the world. Jesus Christ is the only way. That message never owes. It never tires. It never wears out. It never becomes redundant. It is a message that needs to be heard and proclaimed. Amen. But you've got to be willing to hear the call to come out and the call to go out. This morning, I want you to realize everybody in the city came to hear. Boy, that's the kind of power. That's the kind of anointing we want. But you need to also know their message also angered people. Yes. Their message also angered a lot of people. Sometimes you've got to be prepared that the message and the anointing that you operate in will be rejected and anger people. Yes, amen. Well, I'm going to let that sit in for a second. Yes. You need to understand the message and the anointing you operate in may anger people. Chapter 13, verse 51. Look what happened. <coughs> Sister Sandra, if you'll come. Verse 51 says, And they shook the dust off their feet against yes. them. This morning, can I encourage some of you to shake the dust off your feet? I want you to listen to me now. I'm closing. Some of you have been in some places you should not have been. Some of you have been in some bad situations in your life and you need to shake that dust off. Yes. Some of you are being bound by the past trips you've been on, the past streets you've walked, the past things you've been accustomed to doing, and it's time for you to shake that stuff off of you and realize you need to begin to say, okay, God, I'm going to shake it off and move it on. Shake it off and move it on. I've been through hell and high water, but I'm going to shake it off and move it on. I've been cursed and condemned, but I'm going to shake it off and move it on. Fingers have been pointed at me. I've been mocked and laughed at. I'm going to shake it off and move it on. I'm going to continue doing what God has called me. I know it may anger people. I know it may cause some bad but I'm gonna sh I will not be hindered because of somebody else talk right. against me. I'm going to shake it off and move it on. Some of you this morning need to shake off that dust of the past battlefields that you've been in and move on. Amen. God's calling you out. He's setting you forth to go to all the world. But will you answer? Will you answer? I hope so. So how many of you this morning, what are you called out of? How many of you find yourself bound by all kind of situations in life and you need to get out of it? How many of you find yourselves behind bars, wrapped in all kind of seaweed and muck and stuff and you feel like you're in quicksand and the more you try to do, the further you fall. God's calling you out of that today. God's trying to get you out of that stuff that you've got to be willing to come. Yes. And some of you are out and you're standing on solid ground and God is asking you, what are you called out for? What's your purpose? What's your destiny? What's your mission? How are you going to impact the world like Barnabas and Saul? How are you, how are you going to change rising falling? Through barbecue plates? Maybe. How are you going to change the world? By letting your light shine so that everybody will give glory to God. We need you. This area needs you. You've got to answer the call. And then that third person, third group of people, you've got so much stuff from the past caked on your feet, you cannot have victory. You've got so much, so many things from the past you can't let go of. Today's the day you shake it off. And you move on. Shake it off and move to the next place in your life. Get rid of that old past. You've got a new future. Do you hear what I just said? Get rid of that old past. You've got a new future. God wants to bless you today. Stand with me.